Okay, today we're talking about Sahara. Yeah, um, there's a reason for that though. It involves a recent study and years of investigation trying to figure out how Sahara Desert changed in the past hundreds of thousands of years. Because even though it kind of looks like this from outer space today, as recently as 9,000 years ago, it was a much greener place. But more importantly, it seems to go through these unusual cycles of green desert, green desert with a very predictable pattern. And though it does relate to a kind of a climate change, it's actually a lot more than that. As a matter of fact, these changes in the Sahara Desert are one of the main reasons humanity evolved into what we are today. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton. Well, let's talk about some of these more important findings about Sahara, focusing on the recent study that came out a few days ago, discuss some of the evidence we have in regards to what this used to be like just a few thousand years ago, and talk about where it's headed next in the next few thousands of years. But also basically what drives all of this. Because unlike a lot of other patterns when it comes to climate change, this one is actually quite extreme and quite unusual. But let's start right here. Here's an intriguing several thousand year old picture discovered in a cave in Sahara, literally showing people swimming. And so when this picture was originally discovered, it implied that maybe Sahara was not always like this. This is actually a pretty old discovery, but it sort of started this questioning process. Another intriguing picture is what's known as Lake Unyanga. You can kind of see it right here in this image from NASA, but this is literally right in the middle of Sahara. It's actually right here in Chad. And so what's really unusual about these lakes is that they're technically formed by water that used to exist here a long time ago, with a lot of it coming from underground, and a lot of it representing the remnants of water that used to exist here thousands of years ago. But being the hottest and the driest place on Earth, and essentially the largest hot desert on the planet, the biggest desert technically is Antarctica, but that one is obviously a cold desert. Anyway, being the hottest and the biggest, we really don't expect any water, especially in the center. Yet here we are, and there are quite a lot of signs of remnants of water all over the place. Archaeologists even found remnants of hippos in some of the strangest locations in Sahara where nobody knew water existed, and this was once again from approximately 9,000 years ago. With a lot of this preliminary evidence implying that Sahara was probably not really a desert up until recently. But then, quite suddenly, in just a few hundred years, it transformed into what it is now. The evidence for this change was pretty strong, but a few decades ago, scientists wanted to find out if this was just a one-time event or if this was some kind of a cycle. And some of the first evidence that this is a cycle came from studying various caves, specifically what's known as spaleothemes. For example, stalagmites and stalactites. These usually require underground water to grow efficiently and they often require hundreds and even thousands of years to grow very large. And so kind of like with the tree rings, by studying the growth patterns inside these formations, early studies established that this seemed to be a cycle. Sahara seemed to change every few thousand years, going between desert and a more typical to Africa, savanna state, with a somewhat predictable rate. But it wasn't actually clear how often. It wasn't clear if it was 40,000 years, 100,000 years, or something entirely different. But what became clear is that this new desert Sahara formed between 8000 to 6000 BCE and seemed to coincide with the collapse of the ice sheets in the north. Basically the end of the last glaciation period. And so the assumption for many years was that it was maybe related to glaciation and to the ice ages in general, suggesting that maybe this happens every 41,000 years. But interestingly the evidence also suggested that Sahara was also dry approximately 13,000 years ago, which didn't really fit the pattern. Basically, during the last glaciation period, it wasn't really green as you would expect it to be, which led to a lot of different propositions. If not ice ages, could it be asteroids? Could it be something related to volcanoes? Maybe some kind of a release of a greenhouse gas? Or is there something else entirely going on here that nobody really considered? And so a few years ago, there was actually a study from the MIT that used the analysis of sedimental deposits focusing on the isotope of thorium, which is often produced at a constant rate and tends to dissolve in seawater, but usually sinks into the sediment right away, to basically determine how rapidly dust was accumulating on the seafloor, the dust that was coming from Sahara. So essentially when there is a lot of dust, and a lot of it gets deposited as a sediment, 
the overall concentration of thorium is usually pretty low. But when a desert shrinks in size, and there's a lot less sediment, and there's a lot less dust being deposited in the water, the concentration of thorium jumps dramatically. And through these patterns, the researchers found that the cycle seems to be almost exactly 21,000 years. And also somewhat correlated to various types of monsoon activity that seem to happen in Africa. And the only explanation here that made sense was that this was related to one of the Milankovitch cycles. Specifically the cycle of precession. A slight wobble on the axis of planet Earth that changes the rotation by approximately 2 degrees every 21,000 years. And so when the cycle affects the northern hemisphere, it tends to increase the strength of what's known as the West African monsoon system, which also causes much warmer summers in the north, including Europe and Asia, but most importantly, quite suddenly introduced a lot of precipitation to the entire desert, which apparently very quickly results in the spread of the savanna type vegetation pretty much across the entire region. Also apparently gives birth to a lot of these unusual creatures currently hiding in the sand. This is an example of what's known as a tadpole shrimp, something you might have also seen from some of the pictures in the 2023 version of the Burning Man. And so in a lot of different deserts, when the rain starts, these unusual creatures come out to breed, hatching rapidly in just a few hours, forming eggs, and then disappearing into the sand until the next rain. Fun fact, that's basically where you also find brine shrimp, also known as the sea monkeys. Quite a lot of deserts out there seem to contain these unusual organisms, basically just waiting for that rain to start. But once the climate changes completely, the entire region transforms as well. And so apart from these little guys, everything starts turning green. And very likely stays this way for thousands and thousands of years. And it seems that every time this happened in Sahara, it sort of correlated with the major migration of different species across Africa, and most importantly, major waves of migration of humans out of Africa as well. Or just to rephrase this, the entire Sahara acts as a kind of a gate control mechanism for dispersal of various species from North and Sub-Saharan Africa across the entire planet. And when this was originally discovered back in the days, this was a huge breakthrough. It basically helped us understand how humanity evolved in the last few thousands of years and how all of this led to the spread of humans across the planet. So basically when Sahara remains a desert for thousands of years, humans, along with other species, tend to be concentrated in the region in the south and of course in Central Africa. But as soon as everything here became green again, that's when the migration started, happening several times during the last few hundreds of thousands of years. But in order to try to understand this even better, some of the recent studies decided to really find out if the cycles here were only driven by the axial changes or if there was any other effect. Turns out that there is definitely something else. And it actually seems to be a combination of things. And by simulating various Milankovitch cycles and also conducting climate simulations involving glaciation periods, focusing on the last 800,000 years, the researchers behind this recent study basically confirmed that it's not just the axial tilt, it also seems to be affected by the actual glaciation as well. Discovering that during the glaciation period, when the ice sheets are much bigger, it seemed to suppress the formation of Green Sahara, preventing the humid periods from forming and obviously preventing the migration of the species. But in between glaciation, when the planet warms up and when the ice sheets shrink, the African monsoon system expands and the rains return to Sahara for thousands of years. Which basically implies that the actual cycle is not really perfect 21,000 years and does seem to have occasional pauses here and there. For example, there's a lot of evidence that Sahara was also very green approximately 126,000 years ago which very likely led to yet another migration period out of African continent. And not just humans, quite a lot of other animals as well. But obviously it didn't just prevent things from migrating out, it also prevented things from migrating in. In some sense, allowing a lot of species to evolve in peace in the region that was basically inaccessible to anything else. And because this is most likely where our ancestors came from, by itself this whole cycle happening in Sahara is a very important part of human history. Interestingly, the next Green Sahara is expected to happen in the next 15,000 years. This is when the North African monsoon season is going to return to North Africa. At least that's what the scientists predict right now, because here we're still learning about these things and we're still trying to understand what's going to happen to our planet in the next few hundreds of years. But whether humans are still around or not, whoever is around and whoever is dominating Central and South Africa is most likely going to get a chance to migrate once again 
in 15,000 years, the gatekeeping mechanism is going to be once again open. So definitely a pretty interesting discovery that sort of connects climatic cycles on planet Earth with the migration and evolution of human species and basically shows us that there are still cycles out there that we still don't really understand. And though some cycles might be disrupted by what humans are doing to the planet right now, it's quite likely that the planet is still going to find a way regardless if humans are still around or not. So definitely some cool discoveries about this beautiful desert. And so until future discoveries or until someone else discovers something cool about Sahara, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out the studies and the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.